society first. Now, again, we're not talking about the disorder. I find it sad that the feeling of the disorder and you know feeling anxious na, na use sila interchangeably. Anxiety is a spectrum. You could have it mild, you could have it moderate, you could have it extreme. Right? But the problem is that if you mention anxiety, some people would think about disorder, just like depression. Nade depress ako. Yung pala malungkot ka lang talaga. But since the term is used interchangeably, inisip nila that you have a depression, depressive disorder. Now, for example, how does how is anxiety triggered? For example, we're all living in ancient times, okay? Tapos may may saber to tiger na dumating. Ancient times tayo, panahon ng ating mga ninuno, may saber to tiger. Our reptilian brain, kaya may sumasali pa. Okay. Our reptilian brain, yung pinaka primitive brain that we have, right? The one in yellow in this diagram, it triggers the fight or flight response. You don't think, you just take action. Fight or flight response. There is no logic. There's this immediate response that happens. Now, as we progress into mammals, right, we develop this emotional brain, our mammalian brain, as they call it. Then we have emotions attached to the triggers. Either the, the stressful situation made us happy, made us fearful, made us excited. Well, definitely, kung may saber to tiger, tayo ay magiging fearful about that situation. Now, when we, de- uh, when we develop further along the timeline, Nag- nagsama-sama na tayo into social settings, we develop a social logical brain, the neocortex, right? It's the thinking brain. This attaches meaning, planning, evaluation, and we'll remember what to do and what not to do next time na may saber to tiger. More importantly, we share this information with our uh, co-mammals in that time. But we're no longer being chased by saber to tigers, right? Instead, we have work stress, we have family, we have people, we have deadlines, we have goals. All those things that when they trigger you, right, they cause stress. And the same primitive fight or flight response, it happens. It, it's triggered. As basic as, as no, nalilate ka lang si deadline, that old, that old uh, survival mechanism as if makikipagpatayan ka with a saber to tiger, it triggers, right? It hijacks our emotions and our logic. Minsan nangyari na sa inyo, sa sobrang galit, hindi ka na nakapag-isip yung pagproseso ng emosyon. Nangyari na sa dulo. Parang may emergency. Kilos ka lang. Hindi mo pa iniisip yung nangyayari. Nung tapos na, saka mo lang nag, nag-grasp yung severity of, of, uh, of the weight of what happened. Again, this response is normal. Anxiety is normal. But when it becomes pathological or chronic, right, it becomes learned helplessness. You learn that anxiety is normal, hence the quality of life is like this. And in a crisis, sometimes this turns into a crisis, a panic in some sort of cases. Alright, so I mentioned that we're gonna study the physiological symptoms, right? So going back to the root cause or triggers that get you anxious, the event of anxiety seems to happen in the brain. So, if we use a biomedical model, kung ang problema is nasa utak, ang gamot kailangan sa utak din gagawin, right? Anxiety is happening in the brain, therefore, is it a brain problem? Or could it be that you're having some sort of physical problem that makes you anxious? Being anxious makes you tense first, agitated, you know, increased heartbeat, then it leads to difficulty breathing and difficulty concentrating. This happens because, like, nabasa nyo sa kabilang slide, adrenaline is pumped throughout your body, the emergency. Again, ha, di na tayo nahabol ng saber to tiger, but the same mechanism pumps out adrenaline dahil na late ka lang ng isang minute sa iyong report. Now, adrenaline, you know this, it allows you to do superhuman feats, physically and even mentally. Adrenaline shuts down some of your systems, pumping the blood to the needed parts of your body during a crisis. Again, as if you're about to fight a tiger, pero kailangan mo lang pala mag-submit ng deadline. You become strong because blood is transferred to your muscles. Some of your body parts, such as your stomach, your brain becomes hypervigilant and hyper-focused. That happens. And after that, of course, you cannot sustain that. You become tired. You become irritable. You retain water. You bloat. This is because your body is now trying to find that homeostasis. Kasi nag-spike ka, your body wants to go back down to equilibrium. That is from adrenaline and cortisol. Now, remember, you just went into crisis mode. It's easier to go to crisis mode than to go back. Unfortunately, true. Our adrenal glands were designed that way. Mas mabilis mag- matriggered. 
Pero notice that it takes a couple of minutes, sometimes a couple of days, just to go back to that equilibrium standpoint. But if the interval of being stressed, the adrenaline pumping is too sudden, your new normal becomes anxiety. That ultimately leads to weight gain, of course, na burn out mo katawan mo, insulin and all those things, and other self-esteem issues along the way. So again, if we use a biomedical model, the traditional Western medical approach, do we treat these 10 symptoms with 10 types of medicine? Would you think that would be practical? So this is what an adrenal body looks like. Our current studies show na pag ma pag may adrenal fatigue, ito yung mangyayari sa ating katawan. A body that is exposed to chronic stress and anxiety. And of course, we don't want to live our lives as such, right? The human body was not designed to handle stress chronically. Okay? It just so happened na habang nag-develop tayo, dumadami lang talaga yung mga stressors. So what? Do we need to increase our stress tolerance? Na babasa nyo sa mga stress health book. Personally, I find it stupid na taasan mo pa stress tolerance mo because just like any vessel, kung nilakihan mo yung space for stress, ano mangyayari? Mas marami ka lang maa-attract na stress. That's basically it, right? What we need to do is to change our relationship with stress, know the triggers, like to understand it even better. Uh, what, we need to, what we need to also do is to apply a holistic approach addressing what we eat, our exercise, how we sleep, and, and who we interact. Uh, also, even how we participate, gratitude could uh, be a way para mabawasan yung anxiety. So there, I've been uh, researching a model, right? How to cope for anxiety during COVID-19. Yung makita niyo yung Venn diagram. It's a biopsychosocial approach. But tonight, uh, as mentioned, we're gonna focus on nutrition only. As you could tell, may diagram na pinusent kanina, uh, and dami may mental, spiritual, environmental, we're gonna focus on the sense of safety, increasing that sense of safety by increasing our nutrition. And again, we're not going to look for a solution with a biomedical model. We want to treat the problem holistically, systems approach. What I want to happen after this is that we get to practice the science and art of cooking, right, and nutrition. Uh, and even if anxiety may seem to happen in the brain, know that there are underlying root causes and that we will be treating them with food. Again, with chemistry, right? You are literally what you eat. What you eat becomes chemicals that becomes you become cells, right? Now, if you're getting in the right source of food, you are becoming, you are becoming, uh, uh, I'm saying that, I'm saying that uh, if you're getting in the right types of uh, nutrition and the cells, na replace mo yung mga masasama and then you could build up that gap with something better. Number one, we're going to take this on a circulatory system approach in anxiety. You have to increase your potassium, right? Potassium di lang galing sa sagi. Uh, potassium is an electrolyte. If you're familiar with electrolyte that is needed with energy, uh, it is needed to maintain fluid balance. Uh, because with potassium, it decreases muscle contraction and transmitting signals. You would notice na pag may nagkaroon ng cramp, ano yung sinasabi nila? Kulang pa sa potassium. Because when muscle tenses, right, nangyayari, potential, you need potassium to tell that muscle, to tell the brain, the motor neurons to relax. But if you don't have potassium and you have a lot of sodium, mag tensa na mag tension parate, right? Now, imagine the same situation of muscle contracting, pero hindi sa katawan mo, pero sa puso mo. Your heart tenses up. Without potassium, it doesn't reduce, it doesn't go back to equilibrium. Right. It is used to maintain a steady heartbeat. That's why people with hypokalemia, yung mabababa sa potassium, they have this, uh, this feeling na mabigat sa puso nila. The best sources of potassium, of course, sweet potatoes, right? Dark leafy greens, uh, mga gulay, uh, uh, such as spinach, mushrooms, and bananas. Also, what you need to do is to reduce your sodium, right? Because sodium makes it difficult for potassium to do its work. Chemically, it counteracts. Magka, magkasalungat yung dalawang yan. Sodium is not bad. I mean, salt is not bad. What I find dangerous is that some sodium are mixed with other ingredients that you can't even pronounce. Sobrang chemically, ang dami niyang suffix and prefix na hindi mo na ma-pronounce. Uh, this is usually common with pre-packed foods, right? Na may combination of trans fat. 
this will increase the chances of putting debris in your blood vessels, right? High sodium could result in high blood pressure. Uh, I'm pretty sure na yung, yung mga kung may man sa inyo na diagnosed na with high blood pressure, our recommendation of the doctor is to reduce your sodium because sodium triggers the kidneys to increase the blood volume. Okay, so central nervous system and anxiety, you have to increase your omega-3s. Omega-3s are essential fatty acids, meaning you don't make this inside your body, you outsource them somewhere else, right? And it just so happened that the brain, the brain is composed of these oil. So you really need to have that, let's call this as a building block to build your brain properly. It's a polyunsaturated fat that is used to make hormones as well. If you're familiar with hormones, they play a role in emotional regulation, right? Serotonin, dopamine, melatonin, all those things. All I'm saying is that with omega-3, maganda yung proper, maganda yung creation of hormones na ito, you're stable. Omega-3s also are anti-inflammatory to the brain. In the event of anxiety, imagine your brain, right? It's literally enclosed in, uh, it, it, it's literally inflamed, as in literal na mainit siya. That is the feeling of anxiety because there is too much oxygen that is going on right now. Omega-3 allows you to reduce that inflammation in the brain. Best sources of omega-3 are fatty fishes such as mackerel, salmons, and sardines. Now, you also have to engage your B vitamins such as B12, right? B12 removes the free radicals in the brain because your brain uses oxygen. And again, chemically, when you use oxygen, you have byproducts, okay? And also, if you have too much oxygen, there's this thing called oxidation that, that makes metals into rust. That happens in your brain. Now, with B12, you're trying to remove the excess. You're trying to reduce all these oxidants, hence the term antioxidant. Uh, you need D5 from your B vitamins, which is to make melatonin, D6 to make serotonin. The best sources are seafoods, milk, organ meats, eggs, and avocados. Don't worry, uh, kung madaming information, I will do my best to provide a handout. Ganito rin naman para ma magamit natin yung information. Uli, lalo na sa inyong weight loss trip. Now, with your respiratory system, you have to increase your vitamin D as vitamin uh, D shows that uh, it has the ability to reduce chest tightness and wheezing. Best sources are oily fishes, uh, eggs, milk, and natural sunlight. Also, let me share recent, more, more recently lang, I think this was uh, last week lang in the British Journal of Medical, uh, sa, sa, ano, British, Journal, Brit, British Journal of Medical Notes. They said that uh, People who consume vitamin D are 90% less likely to contract the COVID symptoms. Now, the mechanism is still unknown, pero with vitamin D, I'm guessing that it, since it supports cardiovascular care, mas nagiging resistant yung mga tao from COVID-19. It's not a medicine, but it does, you know, uh, it does reduce the possibility of you contracting COVID-19. You want to decrease these foods such as acidic because it affects the sphincter. Sphincter is yung division sa, sa lungs mo at sa yung, uh, sa yung stomach, right? With acidic foods, it opens up. You have acid reflux. It, makes, it, literally, makes you, it literally makes it harder to breathe. You also want to avoid, av avoid carbonated beverages because it increases bloating. And with bloating, you're increasing pressure to the lungs. Now, here's what's happening if you have pressure in the lungs. You can't breathe properly if you... Isa pa. If you cannot breathe properly, right, mahirap dumalo yung oxygen sa iyong utak. And with that, it's like you're literally getting choked because your systems are bloating. Okay? So you need to decrease these foods, carbonated and acidic. You also need to increase your vitamin D para yung tendency to be bloated, right, and allows you to breathe properly will happen. Okay, digestive system and anxiety, there is a link established in more recent studies as we begin to understand the gut-brain axis. Probiotics, sikat na sikat lang ng probiotics, are now considered to be a sustainable approach to deal with food disorders. This happens due to its anti-inflammatory properties. That gut microbiome, yung mga bacteria na nakatira sa iyong stomach, ito nga yung maganda study dun eh. It was recently found out that your body is composed of 85% bacteria in your gut. Mas marami ang gut bacteria than your cells. I know, it's, it's really, diffi really difficult to, to, to believe. But 
that same gut microbiome, right? It helps you to survive. Remember, they need you to survive for them to be able to survive. Now, in the in the instances of you eating a lot of inflammatory foods, what the gut microbiome does is that it digests these things properly, right? It it digests uh, fiber and uh, it if it eliminates the effects of these harmful ingredients. One particular strain is the Bifidobacterium. Yeah? Uh, researchers are now calling this a psychobiotics. So if you reduce your refined carbohydrates that causes inflammation and you replace them with more fiber, which is a prebiotic, and you also have a probiotic, you are fostering a very, very good microbiome, a very good environment in your stomach that would help you reduce some of your moods, some of your uh, mood instabilities. But some more research are coming up with that. And it's very interesting that uh, before we we like to talk about antibiotics and now binabawi na ng medical field ang antibiotics, mas gusto nila na magkaroon na ng probiotics. But, you know, ganun naman talaga habang nag, nag, nag-e-evolve, nag-develop ang, ang science. We tend to debunk the old the old thoughts at meron na tayong bago. And it's funny that you know, probiotics is now taking center stage. Now, musculoskeletal system and anxiety. Simple sugar could cause high blood pressure. That is no secret. That feeling of sugar rush. At that point, your body and mind is inflamed. Inflammation. I keep saying this word inflammation, right? Since sugar is a combustant, you know, in that stress uh, situation, your your brain as in your 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 body, it's as if it, they're combusting, right? When you're you're on a state of sugar rush, sometimes our thoughts will snowball. Alam mo yun, snowball, nag-iisip ka ng isang bagay from point A, hindi mo alam na nasa point C ka na pala because of that inflammation. Cortisol increases, insulin sensitivity decreases, causing you to sugar crash over time. You cannot sustain that sugar high. Eventually, you crash. When you crash, you get moody, you get irritable, you get emotional. Worse, since na naapekto ng insulin, you will get fat in the midsection and your self-esteem may decrease. Also, you, what you want to do is to increase your magnesium, right? It's a not natural relaxant of the body, just like potassium. If calcium and sodium triggers, potassium and magnesium reduces these instances. So, you, you don't want to be triggered, you want to be relaxed. Okay? So, uh, as you could tell, I did not prescribe any particular diet like keto, IF, or paleo. Because I am a strong believer that the best diet sources should be sustainable, flexible, and smart. And by smart, kung ano man ang available sa yung environment, and it's helping out a lot. Because the best indicator of success really is not a six-pack ab, it's how you feel about your healthy body and mind, right? There's always room for improvement. That's that's why I'm trying to share these information with you. Uh, I do this uh, to reduce my craving. So what I do is I I have avocados, for example, and blueberries. Avocados are very high in omega 3s What I do is I freeze avocados. So kung mag-crave ako, yun na lang ang kinakain ko sa refrigerator. Walang blueberries dito. We have berries like grapes. Pero just sa country nyo, kung may blueberries, it's a good source of uh, anthocyanin. Okay? And vitamin C improves your your immune system. Yung mga yan, yan mga nakalagay niya, try to substitute. If not, try to put that in your refrigerator na naman. At the very moment that you become snacky, at least meron ka yan. Probiotics, of course, very important. Kefir, kimchi, all those fermented foods, like what I said, because those, uh, those, gut, those gut bacteria, they will help you process some of the, the foods na hindi mo, ano, yung mga foods na, na hindi natural. Salmon, salmon or fatty fish, uh, as a recommendation para mabawas yung anxiety and also tumaas ang stress tolerance mo. Try to increase your fatty fish intake. I mean, kung kumakain ka ng beef or pork, try to replace that with fish. Okay, again, these are best sources of vitamin D, magnesium, and uh, what else? Omega three. Those that would try to reduce anxiety. Turkey, uh, well, not really turkey. Try chicken. As much as possible, go for it because of tryptophan. It's uh, it's a relaxing agent, and this is also important. Turmeric, turmeric is very important because it has anti-inflammatory properties. Yes, katas katya. So what I do is, kunyari, kung kakain ako ng kanin, alam mo naman na refined like uh, oatmeal. What I do is I do do a rule of five. As much as possible, I put in 
for other ingredients dun sa pagkain na yun. For example, kanin. Kanin is, well, sabi nga nila, na it would spike your blood sugar. I add in turmeric. I add in pepper because that's very important. I add in chili. By adding these compounds, adding these spices, nag- napapaganda mo yung nutritional value ng kinakain. Simple lang naman siya kung tutusin. You don't have to go no rice. You just have to be smart. Baka you just have to add in more uh, foods that will help you uh, feel fuller for longer. Pababain yung, ano mo, yung blood pressure mo. Pababain yung blood sugar. Okay. And avoid these anxiety triggers lurking in your fridge. Caffeine, I'm not saying that you avoid coffee all, for, uh, all of the instant, right? Uh, let's just say that if you know if you know that consu- if consuming coffee might trigger something with you, you would want to reduce that. Na, na- realize mo yung triggers. Also with sugars, na na mentioned ko niyan, because again, refined sugars combustant. You don't want your brain and your body to combust. That could lead you to having these anxious behaviors. Alcohol drink in moderation. I mean, I guess by moderation, one one glass of wine is up to you. Reduce your salt. Again, salt causes hypertension, difficulty for your blood to flow. Okay, and as much as possible, please reduce processed foods. All right, so four tips na lang. Uh, don't skip breakfast, but if you're not into breakfast, siguro have the first meal of your day be the heaviest because some of us are doing intermittent fasting. Kumakain kami ng around 3 o'clock, mga ganun, mga 4 p.m. Na. So what we do is that we make that meal the heaviest meal, right? Para, uh, of course, one, you feel fuller. Your energy is not spiking then going down. Maganda, stable lang siya. You have constant energy all throughout the day, right? So it doesn't have to be breakfast because some of you may be doing fasting. What I also like to do is I use my tools properly. I do I use smaller plates and smaller utensils kasi literal na pag mas maliit ang plato na ginagamit mo at maliit yung kutsara tinidot mo, right? Mas onti lang ang nakakain mo. This creates the illusion na puno yung plato and it literally slows you down when you're eating. Sometimes when you're distracted when you eat, hindi mo na namamalaya, may kausap ka, subo ka lang na subo. Unfortunately, it takes more than 10 minutes for the brain to tell you na full ka na. If you're having smaller utensils, right, mas mabagal ka kumain, basically. And also, uh, you want to be drinking water if you want to practice that. Inom ka ng tubig kada, every time na kumakain ka, sa gitna habang kumakain ka. Again, para mas mag-register agad sa ipang uh, I also really find it better if you cook your own meals. At least you're in control. You know, you're avoiding food allergies and really being accountable with your diet. Now, if you cannot cook, I had clients like these, may recommend cook na magluto, pero wala silang time magluto. I suggest you subscribe to a meal delivery plan. Marami yan sa social media. Yung, uh, bibigyan nila kayo ng consultation kung ano yung goal mo, are you trying to lose weight, gain weight, all those things. And they will provide you with one week meals, three times a day, isang linggo, and it's based upon your goal. I-deliver nila yan sa bahay. So at least kung wala kang time kumain, and at the very least, again, kumakain ka ng mas uh, appropriate para sa yung diet goal. And lastly, I talk about being mindful. You want to avoid distracted eating. I mean, really enjoy your food. You really enjoy that that moment that you have with the food. Change your relationship with food. Alright? Uh, you might find this weird, but pag kumakain ako, sumusubo ako, I, I, I say thank you every time I bite. Well, not almost every time I bite. Because ang sarap eh. Ang sarap yung feeling na na-appreciate mo na talaga yung kinakain. And the sense of appreciation itself makes the experience even more valuable. Oh yan, uh, this is an example of the things that I've been cooking, right? Mind you, I have known the principles of nutrition for almost four years. I have studied this for almost four years. But I only started cooking last March. Yes, really. I only started cooking last March. It was after that panic attack I realized that I need to assess the rest of my Ma, I need to assess how I rest uh, and how I eat as well. It's time to walk the talk, sabi nga nila. And it turns out that having oatmeal and whey was not sufficient enough. So this is what I do. Uh, yun na nga yung kunyari, pag sakain, I try to add in more spices para tumas yung nutritional value. I add in bleach, yung mga ganun bagay. Ito, I, instead of having pasta, I had zucchini noodles. Yan. 
I had salmonus, which is like this. And nagiging staple na para sa akin is to have uh, kamote, sweet potatoes, because they're very filling and they're very high in they're very high in potassium. Again, I'm not saying you subscribe to a particular diet. All I'm saying is make the right substitute that you do not feel deprived. Okay. If you eat one cup of rice, that's 200 calories. If you eat what? Uh, if you eat seven cups of salad, that is equivalent to one cup of rice. But here's the question. Will you be eating seven cups of vegetables? Maybe not. Maybe around four, maybe around five. But my point is that busog ka na at hindi mo spike yung blood sugar mo. You did not cause that inflammation and... Of course, that trigger of anxiety to prevent it. Right, so lastly, what I want to add to a more holistic input, like what I mentioned, pero mabilis na lang naman ito. Uh, when was the last time you deep, deeply evaluated your health based on this spectrum? Right? Uh, if you're unhealthy with one or more of these dimensions, for example, in your environment, your diet, your sleep, that unhealthy behavior can be carried over to other aspects of your life. It can manifest manifest itself as being being a uh, feeling of being unsafe or being sick. Okay, for example, yan yung ano mo, yung practice mo right now. You only have six hours of sleep. That might carry over to your movement and play. Wala ka na time for exercise. This is your diet. Ito lang yung inputs mo, yung interaction mo, and you have no time for gratitude. All I'm saying is this is a process and. Just like any other process, it's not always about moving forward. Some processes may may tend to move you backwards, may tend to be maladaptive. So if you're uh, maladapting to one of these aspects, it might carry over, right? Okay, so take this for example. Uh, yun na nga, ginamit ko, yung, pala, ginagamit ko yung tool na to, just a quick assessment. And uh, this one is... Ayun na, for a client, and the client gave me these responses, right? I asked him, what do you do to improve your sleep? Yeah. Uh, what, the, what the client did is that by simply adding lavender sa kanya sleep area, right? Mas na -re relax siya, yun, improve his sleep. Baka hindi man niya napakaba yung sleep duration niya. Pero at the very least, yung quality of sleep niya, mas na improve niya. Movement or play. The client was doing yoga, but if you're not into yoga, you could do some parasympathetic breathing. What is that? It's as simple as breathing four seconds in and four seconds out. When you do this, your parasymp parasympathetic uh, brain, right, that rest and digest, it's the opposite of the fight or flight response. It's being triggered. Okay, breathing four seconds in, four seconds out. In the middle of an uh, of an uh, an anxious situation. If you do these breathing techniques, it's like telling your brain the other way around that we are in a relaxed state regardless of the situation. And your brain would follow suit. It's mag-relax siya. Diet. Follow the recommendations na naibigay ko a while ago. Again, I will be providing handouts para gamit niya. Uh, environmental inputs. Just by walking 45 minutes outside and getting some sunshine, malaking bagay na rin yun. Kasi the same mechanism of fight or flight response, that reptilian brain that I've mentioned, also, also is the system for walking. When you're walking, simple walking, you use that, you use that system. Again, when you're walking, iniisip mo pa ba? It's almost automatic, right? Because it uses the same system. Now, what I'm suggesting is that instead of spending your time in having a fight or flight response, spend your time walking instead. Para yung energy sa part ng brain na yun, to transfer towards something else, towards something well, more productive. Social interactions. Appreciate face-to-face -face interaction with family. No, for me, no other time is best. To, you know, simply appreciate na may kasama ka. Especially if you're a person living alone. Ako, I live alone. If I get to, to go out and I get to see people, so talaga, I take a moment, even 10 seconds, just try to appreciate everything. Right? It's not always about, it's not always going to be social media. You have to appreciate what you don't have right now. And that, the quality of your life, that sense of appreciation. Lastly, with uh, self-reflection and something spiritual, take one minute to say thanks. You know, uh, 
even when you wake up, just like say thanks that you are safe, that you are alive, regardless of whatever the challenge was and will be. At least, the very least, you are alive. And before you sleep, you would want to say thanks that you were given the challenge, you were given the opportunity because anyone who would want to quit right now will not, will not be given that opportunity. The fact that you are struggling, the fact that you are feeling this type of anxiety only means one thing. You are creating friction. And when you're creating friction, you are moving towards a direction. If you stop, there is no friction. But if you stop, you're not going to meet your goals, right? Right, so let this learning experience turn your anxiety into a growth opportunity. Again, we're not going to look for the solution with the biomedical model. We treat the problem holistically because we want to go beyond removing anxiety. We want to go to that level of uh, that level of uh, improving your health in general. Even if anxiety seems to happen in the brain, know that there are underlying root causes that you know, 